What's up, what's up, what's up? It's your boy, The Network. And today's topic is Describe Easy Virtual Networking, EVN. This is section 4.3 of the CCNP route exam. It will be known as the CCNP Enterprise Exam if you're taking it after February 23rd, 2020. Let's take a look at the exam blueprint to see where we came from and where we are headed. Hashtag lab every day. All right, it's the exam blueprint implementing Cisco IP routing. Again, it will be known as a CCMP enterprise exam. So if you're watching this two, three, four, five years from now, just know it used to be called CCMP route. It's now called, or it will be called uh, CCMP enterprise as of February 23rd, 2020. So this topic will most likely be in that exam. It may or may not because this, this topic right here, it appears to be a fad to me. I haven't really heard too much about it. Uh, but anyways, we just wrapped up the section, uh, describe DMVPN, single hub, right? Today, we're going to, again, describe EVN. So notice it says describe and not configure and verify. So in other words, we ain't going to be doing no hands-on today. I'm just going to give you a brief definition, a brief description on what EVN is. After that, we're going to move on to finally infrastructure security. We are finally down to the latter uh, quartile of this, of this, uh, of these topics here. I'm moving really slow with these, uh, with these topics, but you know what? Nonetheless, we are getting through it. We are struggling on, we are, we are plowing along through these topics. Anyways, what is EVN? Before we discuss what EVN is, we need to talk about, now we need to go back. You, you may or may not want to go through my CCMP playlist to do this, but this topic goes hand in hand with the section 3.8, configuring and verifying VRF light. Notice we had to do hands-on in that one. And that was pretty lengthy. That video was probably about 45 minutes long because it was just so much to configure. Well, this is where EVN comes in. It's an easier version of VRF light. So let's talk about what VF lo VRF light is. If you remember from the other video, that section 3.8, Virtual routing and forwarding in IP-based IP computer networks. Virtual routing and forwarding, VRF, is a technology that allows multiple instances of a routing table to coexist within, a same, within the same router at the same time. So if you look at this picture right here, shout out to Kevin Wallace. This is where I got this from. It's, kind of, it's similar to VMs, if you know what a VM is. It's a virtual machine, right? It's basically like fake computers within a computer, right? So if you, you can make a, create a computer within a computer and... It has its own, you know, operating system. It has its own virtual, like, mouse even, uh, you know, virtual optical drives, etc. right? So you have these fake computers within a real computer. Well, take this same concept, and I sound like a broken record because that's exactly what I said in that video. We're using, we're taking that same concept and, and doing the same thing with routers, right? So you have these fake routers within a physical router, right? So these are like virtual routers within a physical router, and each one of them have their own separate routing table and everything, right? Now, it sounds like I'm making a, a, a commercial for VRF, and I haven't y'all still waiting on EVN, right? Well, here's the thing: virtual routing forwarding, it's a it's a great concept, it's a great tool. You can segment your network and everything like that, just like VLANs, but on a layer three scale, right? But the problem with this is the the configuration can be so lengthy and if you if like i said the video for that vrf video that was like 45 minutes well that's because i was chugging along uh you know trying to figure out what was wrong with my router ids and stuff like that but anyways it was a long video because of the configuration not only that you have to do sub interfaces for each vrf instance right and then propagate that through the network right not only that we had our switch doing the uh, the trunking for us right we had a switch layer three switch doing the trunking for us right now with evn it basically simplifies the configuration in short i could have just told y'all this at the very beginning of this right in short it simplifies the configuration of a vrf right so it's just like vrf but it's just a simpler configuration and not only that you don't have to do several interfaces Let's head over to the slides for the official definition or next slide for the official definition. So easy virtual networking. EVN is a technology that provides end to end virtualization over layer three networks. EVN allows you to segment the same physical hardware into multiple groups 
which have their own logical network and their routing and forwarding tables. So just like we have separate routers within this physical router, right? These fi these virtual routers within this physical router, we can have separate physical networks. So it's just like oh, your whole your whole network. So you can have a network for just one department, right? Another network for it, but they're not real networks. They're, just, they're virtual networks with their own routing tables, their own VLANs, etc. And that's what EVN does, right? Except it, that's what virtual route VRF does as well. But it's just that the configuration is just it's just so long and involved. EVN makes it a lot easier. And I'm gonna show y'all. Well, I'm not gonna show y'all completely. I'm just gonna give you a sample configuration because, like I said, we're just gonna be doing a little, little basic description here. So you can also run some internal gateway protocols ospf and eigrp those are the only ones you can't do bgap i haven't experimented with it i i but apparently you can only do those evm removes the need just like i said of per vrf sub interfaces so if you remember in that video video 3.8 if you want you can watch it but it's 45 minutes long i tried to trim it down as much as i can that's how i'm gonna trim these videos down because you know, with CBT nuggets and stuff, those other videos, sometimes they can be too long. And I'm like, oh, man, I don't feel like watching. So that's why I try to trim these videos down and try to talk faster. But anyways, you had to create a sub interface for each network, right? So if you look at this uh, topology right here, right, it says here, EVN removes the need of per sub interface. So you had to have a sub interface for this network. If you notice, these are in colors, right? This, let's call this the blue network because it's blue. The blue network is is this top line right here, right? So this laptop going to this server, basically like a pipe. Let's look at this pipe right here, but they're called trunks, right? So the blue network would have had to have been segmented with sub interfaces with VRFs. Now with EVN, we just do the tagging on this, what's called a virtual network trunk or VNet trunk is what they call it. And it's just one simple command. It's, they call it, it's really called a macro because with this command, we take all of this configuration that we put on, on these on these edge interfaces here and then just simplify it with the VNet trunk command. And I'll, again, I'm going to show you another, just a, a, a basic descript, a basic configuration sample. So it removes the need for VRF sub interfaces by using the VNet trunk command. And notice I put this in red and bold here. This, reduce, this helps reduce the amount of provisioning across the network infrastructure as shown in figure one. This is, doesn't say figure one, but it's figure one. So again, this is the yellow network, right? Once it gets here, this traffic gets over here, right? You can have all this configuration here. You can say, oh, this is the IP address. This is what uh, what uh, VLAN is going to be in, etc., right? But once you get in here, you're just going to make this interface, this physical interface, and, and tag it as a VNet trunk. It will do the tagging on this VNet trunk right here. And then this will be like, say, VNet trunk two and the orange one could be trunk three and so on and so forth. Right. So it's just like VLANs. If, you, if you're familiar with VLANs, except that we're doing this at layer three with IP addressing and stuff. So and then once it gets over here, this will recognize the tag. It'll say, oh, like, say, like we received some traffic from the blue network. Right. It'll say, OK, see that it came from the uh, blue network because it'll, it'll be tagged just like a VLAN. It'll say, you know, tag two. And once he sees it's tag two, okay, that's the blue network. Let's go ahead and send it over to the blue server, etc. Same thing with the orange network and, then, and so on and so forth. And that's how it basically um, identifies what traffic came from where. And that's just, again, I'm just doing a basic, simple explanation of it. I'm not going to get too involved with uh, with the configuration and stuff. I'll give you a sample in a bit. A couple fun facts about EVN. EVN is built on top of VRF Lite, just like we've mentioned, and 802.1Q, which is what? <laughs> That's our pop quiz for today. What is 802.1Q? Actually, I'm going to just go ahead and tell you it's VLANs, basically. That's the standards for VLANs. So it's built on top of VRF Lite and 802.1Q encapsulation. Each VNet carries a tag in the VLAN ID field of the 802.1Q frame. So it's a combination of VRF Lite and VLANs. It just makes the configuration of VRF Lite a lot simpler because the VNet trunk command is basically a macro. If you know what a macro is, it's basically like writing down one command that equals a whole bunch of other commands. So you just type in like say VNet trunk. Once you put in that with its ID, it knows, okay, 
All of this stuff means VLAN trunk 2 or whatever the case may be, or VNet trunk 2. This eliminates the manual configuration of sub-interfaces for each virtual network. The sub-interfaces will be created automatically with a VRF forwarding instance assigned to each one. Again, if you want more information on VRF Lite, go into that video, section 3.8 on my channel. And yeah, you will see it's, 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 a, it's a long and involved process when you are creating a uh, VRF Lite solution. So just like with VLANs, VNet traffic can be either tagged or untagged. We've mentioned that. Untagged VNet is referred to as VNet Global, which is the default routing table. Although networks are segmented, it's still possible for them to communicate. So it, it, this is useful for uh, what they call regulatory compliance. So like, you know, if you got HIPAA rules that you need to, to obey, abide by, or if you got, uh, I think, uh, what they call it? Sarbanes-Oxley Act. So if you're familiar with accounting and stuff like that, any kind of any kind of rules that you got to follow, this EVN EVN solutions are are perfect for that because you can separate your traffic and keep your protected information, you know, protected basically. And this is done through route replication. As far as if you want to, this is similar to route leaking, I believe it is. So if you want, you know, to share some information from some other routing tables, you can do this through route replication. With route re replication, routes in the RIB for one VRF are added to the RIB for other VRFs in a router. The routes are then propagated across the EVN through redistribution to an IGP. So also, if you want to share, now here goes another here goes an example again, right? So let's say we have three, like just by this, we have three separate networks, right? We got the blue network, the orange network going through here, and the green network going through here, right? So this is similar to VRFs, VRF Lite, except that we're just using one command, the VNet trunk command, to simplify all the confusing configuration that we've done uh, on, on this manual with sub sub interfaces and VRF forwarding and all of that. We just type in VRF VNet trunk and it just takes all of that information, puts it, passes it on. But anyways, notice that this is separate networks, right? If we want the green network to get, let's say, this has all the DNS uh, services or the DHCP services, right? But that's on the blue network, right? We can have some of this information passed on to the other network so that way in case they need some DHCP information or DA DNS information, we can do that through route replication and or with uh, route leaks. But I believe route leaking is, is more so for VRF Lite. Don't quote me on that. If you do know, please put a comment below. Again, this is my journey. I'm just trying to explain this as best as I can. Anyway, here is a configuration example. I know this looks a little bit long and involved as well, but this is, a, believe it or not, a lot simpler than VRF Lite configuration. You would just go to the global config mode, VRF definition, and then group. You just name the group, whatever. And then VNet tag. This is just like a VLAN, right? You type in VLAN and then you name your VLAN and then the number of the VLAN. You can name the VLAN, etc. right? So this will be kind of like the name of the VRF. This is the tag of the uh, V of the of the um, of the virtual network, that specific virtual network, so on and so forth, right? Then this is the physical interface. We just type in VNet trunk and let them let them know that this VLAN or this interface is going to be trunking virtual networks. So this that's notice I put this in red here. This is the most important command that you need to remember that simplifies all of the work that you've that you've done on uh, on these separate uh, VRFs over here. And then you just put in the IP address just like any other interface. EVN uses a V double. This is kind of redundant here. This I don't even know why I put that little <laughs> information here. But anyways, traffic flowing a VNet trunk is tagged with a VNet tag just like VLANs. Here's another example right here. We got the 160100 network, 170100 network, and the 180100 network. We got a solid line, a dotted line, and a dashed line right here. And all the information gets uh, goes across the VNet trunk. And then once it gets to here, this becomes an 802.1Q trunk because it's layer two, right? And then the traffic gets segmented. A lot easier than VRF Lite. So that is all I got for y'all today. Again, this was just a simple, simple, brief def, uh, description of what easy virtual networking is. If you like this video, please go ahead and click the like button. If you feel like I could have went more in depth or if I made any mistakes, please just put a comment below. 
that is my Twitter handle right there. If you want to go ahead and add me on Twitter, make any suggestions if you want. Any shout outs, I can shout you out if you want. And go ahead and click the share button if you like my teaching style or if you're just learning along with me. Go ahead and share this video on your social networks. In other words, comment, like, subscribe to the network. Perfect.